Hey guys, my name is Jess. I'm with Growing Our Homestead and today I'm going to update you on what we've done in our small little garden area. Man, it is bright and it is getting hot already. But I wanted to, you know, touch on something real quick. I hear a lot of people, they get very discouraged when they have a small amount of space or they're at a rental or something like that. And they're struggling with the desire to want to grow something, but they feel like they can't for whatever the reason. There are dozens of reasons. Um, I mean, even as down to, to as far down to as, um, I don't have the money to put into it to start with. Well, I'm sure you can find some free soil from somebody. It probably won't be great soil. But with a small investment, like a, a bag of earthworm castings, if you can put that in soil that's not great, there's a spider web over here. It's gonna get me. If you can put that into a, a bag of soil or, or a, um, a load of soil that was free, you can make a large difference. Are you gonna have lush, green, perfect stuff? It's possible, it's probably not very likely. But if you take the time to start treating that soil and every year you invest just a little bit, eventually you're gonna have really great soil. And that's kind of what I'm trying to portray, I guess. If you can just do a little bit of growing, say all you can do is one tomato plant on your porch well, then you're gonna have some good tomatoes and you're gonna learn things about this that you wouldn't learn otherwise. And it's important to start learning small. Um, try to grow a tomato plant on your porch. Go ahead, go to Lowe's and buy, they sell patio tomatoes. They're already in a container and with soil. You don't have to worry about anything. I would recommend getting some like fish emulsion and, and watering with it every few weeks once the plant gets good and established and starts growing fruit. It's a good idea to for fertilize it. But you can learn so much in that simple, simple thing. And what's it cost? $10? $15? But that's a skill that we're not taught. We're not shown anymore what the best way is to grow things or even how to grow things. Um, my kids did life cycle this, this year as their academic fair. Um, Mason did a frog and, and Peyton did um, the life cycle of a plant, but they, they weren't taught actually how to grow it. When they were given the plants to examine, they were plants that were already growing they had bought them at Lowe's and that's not anything against them they're teaching them about life cycle but we don't learn how to grow so if you want your kids or yourself or whoever it is to know how to grow their own food for whatever the reason may be I'm not one to consider myself any kind of prepper but things happen we've all experienced that in the last few years things definitely do happen and if you don't understand how plants grow you're going to struggle in situations like that I wasn't scared. I knew that I could grow food if I needed to. And that's where we are. So anyways, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, it's never too early to try. And you're never in a situation where you absolutely cannot try. There's always a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. So, back to the update. Originally, you guys saw this green stalk was actually over there. And if you can see, now that these lovely lush green trees have come in, that corner is not getting much sunlight. So I'm actually gonna move the two planters that are still remaining over there to over on this side where the sun is very strong throughout the day. I actually got pretty smart. So I live in the mountains, but right there, there's power lines that run through. And so this whole little area right here is kept clear for the power lines to run through. So I said, hmm, I know the sun will come through there good. Now, I also have this green stalk that has steadily been over here. This is broccoli and cauliflower. It's really hot today. Their soil is not dry. Um, they're hot. They're just tired and they're hot. And there's not a whole lot I can do about it. I think they're gonna end up going to seed before we get anything, but funny thing is, you never know until you try. And I'll just pull all this out and grow beans and pepper plants and eggplants in it. Woo, I just got hit in the face with a bug. 
Um, I still have my cabbages growing right here. They have a little bit of shade, so they might last longer along with these cauliflower and broccoli. And then I've got um, radishes and turnips over here. I'm hoping that they do okay. But I'm up here because I want to go ahead and move those two over on this side so that they're out in the sun a little bit more. And then I'm going to bring some um, water down here to everybody. So I'm just going to show you what I'm doing. Just wanted to point out we got a little bit of pest damage from something over here on my cabbages. I don't really know what that would be. If everybody knows, let me know. And then we got these babies growing. Happy go lucky. I just planted all these radishes and turnips a couple of weeks ago, and they're already getting pretty big. I hope that I caught them in time, that they won't go straight to seed. That guy's got one coming in. I'm going to pinch off the heads of these other ones, just because they're kind of too close. So when you have a... Alright, so when you have root vegetables, they don't like their roots disturbed. And so, if you have some that are too close together, that they're going to start causing each other problems, your best option is to actually just break the leaves off at the root of the plant that you're not trying to save. So like, these two are pretty close together. I would say this one looks a little bit more in shape than this one over here. So if you watch, I'm just gonna pinch the leaves off. Didn't pull the root, that way you don't disturb the plant that's doing well. This one is probably in the same boat. You can of course let them try to grow. It won't hurt nothing, but you might end up with some really funky shaped items. These back here are the turnips. Turnips don't grow as fast as radishes do. These radishes up here are doing pretty awesome. I'm going to go throw these to the baby chicks. Then we've got our sweet peas, which are doing very good, getting very tall. It is getting warm for them, but we, we're doing good. Then I've got my radishes. Some of them are good and ready to be harvested. I'm trying to wait till more of them get ready so I can harvest them all at one time. Then my lovely mother got me some bush cucumber plants for Mother's Day. And I've got them planted in here variously because obviously I'm about to pull the radishes out. So there's going to be some succession sowing in that. Then this right here, this is cucumelon plants that I started from seed. Um, they're also known as mouse melons, um, Mexican sour gherkins. They will climb this trellis as the sweet peas are timing out because they get too warm. And I've got another couple of them right here. And another couple of them down here. I'm sorry about the shadows. It's really warm and the sun is very bright. I also used some of this space here in the um, carrots to go ahead and put the rest of those cucumbers in, the bush cucumbers. I also took time and planted some um, succession sowing over here where I've had the spinach and the lettuces. Um, I've got okra seeds in the ground because of course they're going to flourish when it gets good and hot and the lettuce and the spinach will be died back by then. And then I've got some zinnias I put in the ground and a few of my sunflower seed, sun, 
flower Steve seeds, which I'm so excited about. And then I have a few nasturtiums that are in the ground as well. Um, just a little tidbit on nasturtiums, two things. One, both the flowers and the leaves are edible. They're a little spicy, kind of peppery. Um, would really be good as a garnish on a salad or even on a taco, but they are edible and they are tasty. They also seem to bring in a lot of pollinators. But the second thing I was gonna tell you about nasturtiums, the best way to get them to germinate is to scratch the outside of the seed and soak them for at least 24 hours before you plant them. And then they will germinate easier. Down here, I've got some stuff pulled out of my greenhouse to harden off. Um, this is an eggplant, this is an eggplant, this is an eggplant, this is an eggplant. And then I've got um, a couple of tomato plants, some tomato plants in this right here. Those down there are Chinese lanterns that are sprouting. And then I've got marigolds in here, more of my sunflower Steve um, sunflowers some nasturtium and some marigolds and then this was the other part of my mother's day gift from my mother which was a um, nice tomato plant from Lowe's um, it looked super bushy when she first got it but of course I pruned it down because there was a ton of um, suckers on it that had really grown so I'm giving it some time to recover before I replant it I just up planted this. This is a ground cherry and she's got a surprise for me. Hopefully we'll have ground cherry soon. Um, finished planting this green stalk with uh, rattlesnake bush beans and cowpeas. So I'm pretty excited about that as well. Um, that's pretty much it for the update. That's everything we've got going on right now. Oh, as far as the house goes, our building permit is officially issued to us. Um, our appraisal and our title search should be back um, around May 20th. So we should be closing somewhere at the beginning of June and within a month and a half to two months should have a house to live in. I'm so excited. Thanks guys for watching. Until next time, I'm Jess and I hope your cup runneth over. Thanks.